let's do uh, one more example of, of, of doing this. Let's see. Here we have um, this space curve. First off, the velocity is going to be our prime of t. So we have v of t is our prime of t. And our prime, let's see, the derivative of the sine is the cosine. So we have cosine ti. Derivative of the cosine is the minus sine. So we have minus sine tj. And the derivative of um, t with respect to t is just 1. So we get plus k. All right, and um, our acceleration is going to be the derivative of the velocity. That's the second derivative of position. The derivative of cosine is minus sine t i. And um, derivative of minus sine is minus cosine t j. And the derivative of constant times k is just 0. So we get this, um, we get this for the acceleration. Now the speed, the speed is going to be equal to um, the length of the velocity vector, which is going to be the square root <coughs> of, let's see, cosine squared minus sine times minus sine would be sine squared. And 1 times k is uh, 1, so we get 1 squared. So let's see, cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, plus 1 makes 2, so the speed is the square root of 2. And this shows us something interesting about motion. We have a constant speed, right? We're not speeding up or slowing down, but we still have some acceleration. In fact, in this case, if you look at the velocity and the acceleration, the dot product of these two would be, let's see, cosine t times minus sine t. And then multiply those together, and you get cosine t times sine t. And then 0, uh, zero k and 1k, so 0 times 1 is 0. Notice that these cancel. That means that in this case, the acceleration is perpendicular to velocity. Turns out whenever there's constant speed, and if the speed is constant, then the acceleration will have to be perpendicular to velocity. That's because there are two kinds of acceleration. The kind of acceleration that changes your speed, that slows you, slows you down or speeds you up, and the kind of acceleration that changes your direction. So you can have the velocity, even though the velocity vector is not changing its length, it can still be changing its direction. And so you can still have change in velocity. You can still have acceleration. We'll explore that further. But for now, we know how to start with a position vector and find our velocity and acceleration vectors. We could take um, the velocity and write that as um, a speed or a magnitude times a direction. So we could, we could take the velocity. If we take the velocity and divide by the length of the velocity, that's dividing by the, the speed, then we have, we have this vector value function. Let's see, the first component is cos t over the speed, but the speed is this constant root 2. Then we have minus sine t over the speed, which is root 2, and 1 over root 2. Notice that if you take this squared plus this squared plus this squared, you're going to get cosine squared plus sine squared over 2. That's 1 half plus another 1 half makes 1, so the square root of that will be 1. So we've got a unit vector now. It points in the same direction as the velocity, but it has length 1. So you can take the velocity, and you can write it as its speed times its direction. Cosine t over root t minus sine t over root t, 1 over root t. It's just pointing out that every vector consists of two things, a magnitude, and in the case of velocity, the magnitude of velocity is speed, a magnitude and a direction. So that's what a vector is, right? An arrow with length and direction.